These are my red speckled red beans that I soaked overnight. As you can see, they're even a bit soft. See, easy to break and a few of them are actually split already. This will help to speed up the cooking process and save electricity and, you know, carbon emissions, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, make them a bit more digestible so you don't have platelet problems. I know that I definitely do when I eat beans. So, yeah, I'm just going to put this in a pot. Sage. And two sprigs of thyme. Just enough to cover the beans. Teaspoon of salt. Stir that around. And cook for an hour and then check for tenderness after that I actually just want to make a comment here just to show you guys the power of soaking your beans normally when I would cook these beans it usually take me about two hours sometimes even three hours to cook them fully or even four um, but because I soaked them they were able to be cooked in just an hour or just a little bit above or just below obviously depending on the beans and the pot that you're using but usually it takes me about an hour when i soak them overnight so guys just remember to soak your beans and also um i just wanted to also dispel the myth that adding salt to your beans before they're cooked makes them hard or whatever that is actually not true if anything it helps to add some flavor flav to the water and when you're done cooking the beans, your beans will have some flavor and will really amp up the, the natural flavor of the beans with whatever seasonings you put in there. Like you see, I put in sage and rosemary. And then you can save the water that is salted as a nice rich um, vegetable stock for other meals that you make later on in the week. Or you can store it in the freezer. And a good thing that you can do with the reserved water is if you have too many beans like I did, you can also freeze your beans, but just be sure to freeze them in water as well so that when you defrost them, they don't break apart and become mush because that can actually happen. So yeah, that's just a good, good tip. You can use the water as a very delicious, rich vegetable stock for soups, cook your pasta in it, cook your vegetables in it, saute your vegetables if you don't want to use oil, you know? And now we're making our fried rice. Now to the pan, we're going to add a tablespoon or two of oil, depending on how much you like to use, a teaspoon of garlic, one chopped up shallot, two green chilies that are chopped up, a teaspoon of whole spices. The spices I'm using are coriander and fennel, as well as some cloves in there. Let that fry off for a minute or two until the onions are tender. And then you're going to add in eight chopped up tomatoes the reason i'm using so many tomatoes is because remember we're not just using the tomatoes for the beans we're also going to be cooking the rice in here so we're making it very very saucy to ensure that there's a lot of flavor imbued in this lovely dish and that could also be replaced with tinned tomatoes as well i believe the ratio is four tins of tomatoes um obviously depends on your size but i'm talking about the 400 gram size tins i think that the right measurement would be four tins of that after the tomatoes have been cooking for 10 minutes with the lid closed, we're going to add in the rest of our spices, which are a tablespoon of smoked paprika. If you don't have smoked, you can just use the original one. Just the smoky flavor will help to add some nice smoky flavor to the dish. And we'll also be adding in a tablespoon of chopped thyme and a tablespoon of chopped fresh rosemary. All of my herbs that I'm using today are fresh um, because I bought a bunch of fresh herbs and I love to use fresh herbs anyway. Um, if you don't have, you can use dried herbs, like I said. Or if you don't like these herbs, you can replace them with other herbs. Um, you can use sage, you can use basil or whatever. This is just a very delicious party rice made to your preferences. And then you're going to mix that up and then close the pot for the tomatoes to cook. Next, we'll be making our greens. I'm actually using beetroot greens because when I bought my beetroot it came with greens attached to them and you just cook them the same way you would spinach so I'm just going to be cooking it very simply with half a shallot some cumin seeds some tomato and just going to fry that up here I'm using two tomatoes diced and half a shallot cut 
and one teaspoon of thyme. And, and I'm just going to fry that off until the tomatoes are cooked. Actually, cherry tomatoes would work much better in this dish. They'd actually make the dish look prettier if you care about that. I do. But I don't have any cherry tomatoes. But use them if you do. And you're just going to cook them up for a couple of more minutes. Probably three to five minutes. Remember, our greens, we don't want to overcook them. So we need to ensure that the rest of our ingredients are cooked. So that when we put in our greens... Since I too. prepped my greens and I kept them in the freezer. Since I don't want them to wilt and go off. Um, mine have a little bit of water that I just want to cook off for a bit so it's actually not a one two it's it's not a one two guys while the greens are cooking we're going to move on to our rice pot we're adding in two cups of rice to our tomato sauce that we made and then we're going to mix that up and then add in our bean broth remember the broth that we made that our vegetable broth we're just going to add that in there to add some flavor flavor see see it doesn't go to waste and then we're going to stir that up and i'm using brown rice but if you prefer white rice you can also use white rice i just had brown rice on hand and also i just prefer brown rice then we're going to close the pot and let that cook for about 30 minutes until it's just cooked and then we're going to add in our beans and the rest of our ingredients like red pepper green peas and salt and pepper to taste after about five minutes the water would have cooked out significantly enough for us to season it and it being done basically so now we can add some salt and pepper to our dish instead of using salt and pepper i decided to use this garlic and black pepper um, seasoning because it has salt in it a little bit of garlic and black pepper so three in one and delicious that when I'm putting in the oven I just put on some butter as you can see just you know to moisturize um, and the oven is already buttered and then we're just gonna put in the oven to roast for about 20 minutes and then we'll check on it to see if it's done if you want you could also just steam this and skip the buttering altogether or you can use olive oil I just decided to use butter because I'm cheating myself exams are finished you know so yeah I'm gonna put this in the oven and After about 30 minutes, you'll see that majority of the water has been soaked. We don't want the rice to be completely dry just yet because we still want the rest of our ingredients to cook in this delicious sauce and to absorb the flavor. And to that, we'll be adding in the rest of our ingredients as mentioned. Then we'll mix that up and let that cook for an additional 5 to 7 minutes. Just to add a different dimension of flavor for something refreshing and cool to our feast, we will be making a quick and easy beetroot salad. And to make that, I just steamed up four beetroot bulbs for 15 minutes and then I diced them once they're cooled. And then to that, we're adding in half a cucumber that's been quartered and sliced. To dress the salad, we're making a very simple spicy dill mayo. And to make that, we're using a tablespoon of mayonnaise, a teaspoon of white spirit vinegar, half a teaspoon of cumin powder, half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a tablespoon of chopped up fresh dill. We're using a lot of fresh herbs in this because why not? I also added in some water just to thin it out a bit to make it easier to um, mix into the salad. Um, and then we're just gonna mix that all up and add that to the salad and then put that in the refrigerator so the flavors can marinate really nicely. And then we're just going to keep the reserved dressing in the fridge to put on top when you serve. And now we're back to our rice. Our rice is now done. And now that it's done, we're just going to switch off the stove and use the latent heat to cook our frozen peas. We added in 125 grams of frozen peas, which is literally half the packet that I had. And we're just going to stir that up. And as you're stirring it up, you'll see that the frost will eventually melt and the peas will cook you don't have to actually cook them otherwise you'll overcook the rice and overcook the peas and we don't want that right and then yeah we're done with the rice we're done it's delicious you're just gonna taste for salt ensure that it has enough salt flavor it if it doesn't have enough salt otherwise i think it is perfectly perfect <laughs>
make the biscuit cakey topping, it's very simple. We're just mixing in a quarter cup of oats, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of flour, and we're just gonna give that a nice mix. You do not have to add sugar. The baked apples will have a lot of sugar in them and they're naturally sweet. Then we'll be making our wet ingredients and to make this is also very simple. You just need half a cup of milk, two tablespoons of butter, a teaspoon of vanilla essence, and then you're gonna mix that into the dry ingredients until it forms a stiff dough. Um, how wet your dough is depends on the kind of topping that you want. If you want a softer one, like a cakey one, you'll make it softer. If you want it more biscuity, you'll make it a bit firmer. Mine is a bit biscuity, as you can see, it's a bit firm. Then you're gonna put it in an oven that's preheated at 190 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour and check on it. Until it smells nice and homey and cinnamony in the kitchen. It'll be delicious. And now we go for the waiting game. What do you do for an hour while waiting for your apple cobbler to eat? Well, for starters, you can eat your apple cores from your apple cobbler and the slices that didn't make it. Fifteen minutes later, this is what it looks like. Look how beautiful it is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to eat the topping. This was delicious, guys. It was so good. And I also made a coconut ice cream, um, homemade. And I served that on top. It's best served warm. With some sort of vanilla ice cream. I made a coconut one There's with vanilla. It was really delicious. Look. Cobbler. Look at the biscuit topping. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Um, obviously, depending on how you prefer it, some cobblers have a more softer topping, others have a biscuit topping, it's up to you. I decided to make mine like a biscuit topping because why not? And I'm going to enjoy this. Oh gosh, look how beautiful that is. And I usually am not the, the baked apple type of person, in fact I never got it. People that cook pears, I, I never understood it. The only fruits that I understand you can cook, tomatoes, chilies, red peppers, and maybe those ones that are a bit confusing. Otherwise, I don't get it, but now I understand. I see the vision.